to the assembled devotees. Can we begin? Uh, yes, Maharaj, we can begin. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh, can, can I share the screen? Yes, Maharaj. I'm, I'm not able to share the screen yet. Okay, now I've got it. Thank you. Okay, so we're studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2. Uh, this unit we're looking at chapters 1 to 5. So this evening we're going on to chapter 2. This is lesson number 3. Mm. Okay, so connection with the previous chapter. You remember the previous chapter, Lord, we were hearing about Sugadeva Goswami recommend Maharaj Parikshit that he could meditate on the Virata Rup and in this way contemplate God in the form of the Virata Rup. So Sukadev Goswami b begins the second chapter by citing an example of how uh, Lord Brahma himself meditated on the Virata Rup. And in this way he's verifying the potency of meditating on the universal form. So this is the, the first verse of the second chapter. Well, Sukadeva Goswami said, formerly, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, by meditating on the Virat Rup, regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. So Brahma had to do the work of recreation and he began by meditating on the Virat Rup, and in this way he became empowered to proceed with his work. Okay, so here's the different units, a different, here's the breakdown of the second chapter. So the first two verses are connected with the previous chapter, and then We'll hear about Sukadeva Goswami describing to Maharaj Parikshit the importance of detachment from the material world. And he describes how we can, be, we can live very simply and we don't need to actually become very much involved with the material energy. We can keep aloof from all the attachments of the material world. So that goes on up to text 7 and then he will describe 
to Suk Sukadev Goswami will describe to Maharaj Parikshit that you can meditate on the super soul. Now, previously in the first chapter, he was speaking about meditating on the Virat Rup or on using the pantheistic approach, seeing the world as God. But now in the second chapter, we've come a step higher and we're going to hear about how we can meditate on the Lord in the heart. So it's significant that you don't need to go anywhere to meditate on the super soul because the Lord's in the heart. So where, wherever you are, he's with you. We just have to fix our mind on him. Sukadeva Goswami will describe how to meditate on the Lord. That comes in text 8 up to text 14. And then 15 to 22, we'll hear about the process of giving up the body and going directly back to Godhead, getting out of the material world. We'll hear about the yogi who goes immediately out of the material world to the spiritual world. And then after that, then text 23 up to 32, we'll describe a different yogi and he takes a more gradual approach to going back to Godhead. He's also giving up the body, he's also leaving the material world, but he's taking it very gradually and we'll hear about his ascent, how, how he actually proceeds to go to the higher levels of existence. And then finally you have Sukadev Goswami's answer to Maharaj Parikshit to prepare for death, what you need to do. All right, so here's a from Prabhupada's purport, uh, being empowered to do re the recreation. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, uh, well, first of all, reviving our original consciousness. Lord Brahma had become forgetful. So even what to speak of us, even Lord Brahma sometimes becomes forgetful. Prabhupada explains this forgetfulness of the living being, beginning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant, is a tendency which can be counteracted by meditation on the virata rup of the Lord. So tendency to forget can be counteracted by meditating on the virata rup. As soon as this forgetfulness is removed by vaya vasaya buddhi, as mentioned here and in the Bhagavad Gita 241, follows at once. This ascertained knowledge of the living being leads to loving service to the Lord, which the living being requires. So as soon as we overcome the forgetfulness, then this vayavasaya buddhi, meaning that resolute intelligence, fixed intelligence is given. In Bhagavad Gita, Vayavasayat Mika Bhuti Ekiha Kuru Nandana. Those who are on this path are resolute in determination and their aim is one. So here also this resoluteness, this uh, fixed intelligence, and then they can proceed in the path of devotion. Okay, so that's the first verse. All right, we can have some people read here. We invite someone, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Karmat Pranam. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.2, the way of presentation of the Vedic sounds is so bewildering that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 
So Sukadeva Goswami. Recording in progress. Sukadeva Goswami is pointing out to Maharaj Parikshit that he should not be bewildered by the Vedic sounds. The, the Vedic sounds, of course, may appear very attractive, but we should not be attracted to what the Vedas offer. The Vedas may offer elevation to the heavenly planets, but that is not the goal. That is not what a devotee is interested in. Devotees are not interested in simply going to the higher planets. The devotees want to get out of the material world completely. We're not interested in continuing our material existence, even in the higher planets, although so much sense gratification may be there. That kind of happiness is not for the devotees. All right, Maharaji, you can keep reading. There's another text here. Oh, okay. A, a fish out of water is a fish out of water. Right? You know this example of the fish out of water? What's happening here? Yeah, does someone like to take up this, what's the analogy, the fish out of water? Hare, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I try? Maharaj? Yes, yes. So the, the natural habitat of the fish is water and so the fish will be uh, satisfied or happy only when fish is in the water. When the fish is out of the water, the fish will suffer because that's not the natural place of the fish. So that's the same situation we are in, that our natural place is back home and we are out of place and therefore we will never be happy in, in this situation no matter how much hard we try. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Maharaj Hare Krishna. Yes. Well, Prabhupada was talking about the conditioned souls and how they dream about so many illusory pleasures. So, in the same way, the fish out of water, even you may put the fish in the air-conditioned room, in the five-star hotel, it's not going to be happy because he actually belongs in the water. In the same way, the living entities, we actually belong in devotional service. Our natural condition is to be engaged in the loving service of the Lord and we will never be satisfied until we come back to that situation. All right, someone else like to read here, please. Thank you, Maharaj. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.23. For this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fit and never endeavor for unwanted things, being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing. Right. Oh, okay. So, the world of names, right. The material world is like that. It's a world of names. So many things we have. And we're thinking they're all so, so, so important, the essential things we have to have. But here Sukadeva Goswami is encouraging Mah Maharaj Parikshit to understand that actually all of these objects of the material world are not necessary. That we don't need them to maintain our existence. We can live very well. We live for many, many years without mobile phones and without computers and without cars and without air conditioning. We live very well without all of these things. But nowadays we become so dependent on all of these things, actually. Do we really need them? So Sukadeva Goswami is encouraging Maharaj Parikshit that you should endeavor only for the minimum necessities. <laughs> Minimize our needs, that's important for us. So we, we have to 
perceive practically that all such endeavors are just hard labor. We work so hard, right? You work so hard for nothing. <laughs> what do we do? You earn so much and then you spend it, you buy the motor car, in a short time the motor car is finished, it's scrap. You buy the computers, the computers quickly, they're also becoming obsolete and slow and out of date and you have to renew everything. We become so dependent on these things. Actually, we don't actually need them. Rupa Goswami and Srila Vyasadeva, all these people, they wrote these books. They wrote all their books on palm leaves. They didn't have anything. They wrote everything out on palm leaves. And here we are. We have made so many nice arrangements for us to absorb ourselves in these same, these same things. So we have to be cautious about this. Okay, uh, let's see. Next section, Sukadeva Goswami is describing the path, is going to describe the path of renunciation. Because Maharaj Pariksha is cursed to die, so he has to really detach himself from this world. And the que Maharaj Pariksha's question was, what is the position of one who is about to die? And what is the position of all people at all times? So Sukadeva Goswami is describing the need for renunciation. Of course, he's a very renounced person himself. So naturally he's going to preach about renunciation to others. So here are some points from Srila Prabhupada's purport. Just some of the main points, some gleamings from it. Srila Prabhupada has quite extensive purports on this section in the Bhagavatam. Uh, Prabhupada wrote, of course, the second canto purport, so very early, a very long time ago. Maybe he was even still in India at the time when he was writing the second canto. Anyway, here are some points. First of all, the Bhagavad Dharma or the cult of Srimad Bhagavatam is perfectly distinct from the way of fruitive activities. That's made very clear in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, where it says, Dharma Projita Kaitavo. Right? Completely reject all religion which are simply cheating. And the Srimad Bhagavatam propounds the highest truth. And so it's very different from the path of fruitive activity. And then second bullet point, all material existence is moving, on, is moving on as jagat, simply for planning business, to make one's position very comfortable or secure. But actually, we, we do that. Our whole life is just spent just thinking, trying to be more comfortable, trying to be more secure. But the miseries of life are still there. Everyone sees that this existence is neither comfortable nor secure and can never become comfortable or secure at any stage of development. The whole material creation is a jugglery of names only. In fact, it is nothing... Recording stopped. It is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter like earth, water and fire. Therefore, a devotee is not interested in creating unwanted... Recording in progress. A devotee is not interested in creating unwanted things for a situation which is not at all reality, but simply names of no more significance than the babble of sea waves. A devotee realizes how much history and historical persons are useless products of flickering time. The fruit of worker aspires after a, a, a big fortune in the matter of wealth, women and worldly adoration. 
Those who are fixed in perfect reality are not at all interested in such false things. For them, it is all a waste of time. Since every second of human life is important, an enlightened man should be very careful to utilize time very cautiously. The transcendentalist is warned herewith not to be captivated by the external features of fruitive actors. Human life is never meant for sense gratification, but for self-realization. Srimad Bhagavatam instructs us solely on this subject from the very beginning to the end. All right. Oh, some more points. The civilization, the civilization which aims at this utmost perfection never indulges in creating unwanted things or to follow the principle of the best use of a bad bargain. Spiritual advancement of the living entity is absolutely necessary. One should accept only the bare necessities of life and depend more on God's gift without diversion of human energy for any other purpose. The materialistic advancement of civilization is called the civilization of the demons, which ultimately ends in wars and scar scarcity. The transcendentalist is warned to be fixed in mind, so that even if there is difficulty in plain living and high thinking, he will not budge even an inch from his stark determination. It is the duty of a transcendentalist to help persons who desire real salvation and to support the cause of salvation. A Prabhupada, we're quoting Srila Prabhupada's purport here, it's the main points from his purports on this section. And uh, in the section, Sukadeva Goswami had been speaking about accepting only the bare necessities of life depending more on God's gift. Sukadeva Goswami explains, Oh, there's no need of a bed. You can simply lay on the flat ground. And you don't need pillows when you have arms. Just use your arms for a pillow. And then he says also, you can uh, drink the water from the river and you can get your clothing from the bark of the trees. <laughs> so... Uh, very extreme measures which we would, you'd have to take to try to follow the advice of Sukadeva Goswami. But Sukadeva Goswami was describing like this, uh, how actually everything is provided by God. You don't, we don't need all of these big factories. The factories don't produce food. Sukadeva Goswami says the trees provide fruits. There's so other, everything is there by the gift of God. We just have to take advantage of what is being given by nature. But because of our polluting consciousness, we, we try to exploit everything. So described here, civilization of the demons. The materialistic advancement of civilization is called the civilization of the demons and ultimately ends in wars and scarcity. And we're seeing, we're seeing today the same thing. So, we ask you, we ask you to reflect on your own experience and consider how the Lord makes arrangements for your maintenance. We have a, a lot of experience about this. I don't know so much about you people, but I know myself as a devotee, uh, you know, in the very beginning of our movement, uh, we were very much dependent on Krishna. And we would go out and we'd go around the countries, even we'd go around the country. And very often we 
we found, we saw how Krishna would make arrangements for our maintenance. How people would come and they would help us when we were in great difficulties. Somehow Krishna would send somebody along just to help us, to repair our vehicle, or they'd provide us shelter. In so many different ways Krishna made arrangements for our maintenance. Because we were out, going around the country just trying to preach and distribute books, and we were just totally depending on Krishna. And Krishna reciprocated. Different people would come and they would offer help, and they would give suggestions, they'd give advice, they'd give support. So many ways Krishna, we saw how Krishna made arrangements for our maintenance. And we see Srila Prabhupada, how he, the Krishna consciousness movement developed. How Prabhupada went to the West with nothing, no money. He had to go, he went on the boat and came there to um, New York and he was alone. And he, first he went to Butler, Pennsylvania where the Mrs. Agarwal was, this one man Agarwal. Prabhupada had met this Agarwal family in Agra. And he, he, this man in Agra had told that my son's in America. So Prabhupada said, oh, your son's in America, let him sponsor me. And so Prabhupada never thought any more about it. And, but then later on that man Agarwal came and met Prabhupada and said, my son sponsored you. Now you can go to America. So this was how Prabhupada went off to America. Of course, there were many other events which took place before Prabhupada could actually go to America. But that was the beginning. So Krishna was making arrangements for Prabhupada to go. And when, when Prabhupada got to America, Krishna made arrangements for his maintenance. Everything was provided. Prabhupada didn't go and get a job. He didn't go to work. He was already over 60, 70. He was 70, right? And there he is in, in America, what a foreign country. What's he going to do? But Krishna made arrangements. Krishna provided. Krishna took care. And we opened more and more temples. We saw, for example, in England, we were living in a small rented house in London, and we had many devotees. The temple was really bulging. There was more and more people joining. And it was at that time that, that George Harrison, he purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor for the devotees. So he purchased this beautiful manor with a big estate, with land and everything. Krishna provided. We didn't have anything, but Krishna arranged that he provides for the devotees. And there's many other centers like that. The Prabhupada, the land in Vrindavan, the, the person was going to give the land and she was thinking to give it to someone else. And then she said, well, okay, we will ask Radharani. And so they, they had uh, these two uh, pieces of paper. One was with Radharani and one had nothing. And the devotee had to pick the piece of paper which said Radharani. So he picked the right paper and so we got the land. And so it was very lucky. It was really Krishna's arrangement. And so many examples. The devotee just surrenders to Krishna and Krishna makes arrangements. So, do you have any experiences of your own? Did Krishna make arrangements for your maintenance? Someone would like to tell us? Yes? How many people do we have here? Thirty-five, Maharaj. Thirty-five, Maharaj. 
Yes, certainly, when we're doing the Lord's service, then Krishna will make arrangements. What about for your own personal self and your own life, and your own personal life, family affairs? Don't you feel also the arrangement of Krishna there, how he's making arrangements for your maintenance? Uh, yes, Maharaj, for me, from my childhood, it's actually it's all arrangement by Krishna, because I was brought up with his own money because my father worked for the temple administration and uh, we lived literally on the salary uh, which is uh, earned by my father, which is uh, given by the TTD administration. So, and my education and of course uh, my marriage, I believe that everything is arranged by Lord. And even now, after coming far away from home also, only because of his mercy, I can see that uh, uh, we are continuing in devotion. And every day, I really believe that it is only because of his mercy. Everything is so well in my life that I don't have any uh, deficiency or def uh, defect or anything, uh, Maharaj. I got everything. It is Lord's mercy. Okay, thank you very much, Madhaji. Yes, thank you. the Lord arranges everything. If, when we surrender, we take shelter of the Lord, He makes the arrangements for our maintenance. I'm sure if we consider in our own life, as Madhaji said, her education, her marriage, and later on moving far away, another place, then again, the Lord makes arrangements. Anyone else like to volunteer your experience? Maharaj, Bengal Gopinath Prabhu has raised his hand. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, Maharaj, I just like to share uh, the, the difficulties I was uh, having like uh, before uh, you know, joining the Krishna consciousness. My elder brother, he was in Krishna consciousness and he was. Uh, uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, to, you uh, know, uh, sending the link or the, the contact person uh, where I, where, when I was sharing in Sharjah. I'm talking about uh, 2005, 2006, Maharaj. So, uh, uh, my workplace uh, and uh, the, the where I was staying, it was very far. So, I was unable to uh, go to the, you know, uh, the where the satsang was happening. So, uh, I was finding very difficulty. So, this was uh, we were we were you know we were praying for uh, the Lord to make the necessary arrangements. So uh, fortunately, and uh, because of the the, the, the Lord's mercy, uh, I moved to a better place where I was. Uh, I got the the, the association of the devotees um, uh, in a nice way, and then uh, uh, I was uh, you know I kept the Krishna consciousness, and then uh, getting the satsang, the association of the devotees. So. Uh, this is actually the Lord's arrangements, uh, Maharaj. So this was uh, this is this is my personal, uh, you know, uh, 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 realization and uh, the uh, you know the this, this we, we my whole family we all accept, uh, you know accept this uh, because of the Lord's mercy. Uh, we would uh, I was able to get the association, Maharaj. So this was one uh, uh, thing uh, which we realized. Maharaj. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Yes. 
So sometimes Krishna makes arrangements for our maintenance and sometimes Krishna may also take from us, you know, as well. There's that wonderful verse which describes, Krishna says, when I'm very merciful I take everything away. <laughs> so that's also Krishna's arrangement. So Krishna gives, Krishna can also take. We have this experience, we have to depend on Krishna. What is Krishna's desire? Who is this? Do you recognize the deities? Radha Madhav. Okay. All right. All right, let's make some groups here. We want to have... Uh, how many people are here? What was it? 36? Yes, Maharaj. 36 people, right? Yes, Maharaj, there are 36. All right, so six, we'll have six people in a group. We've got six groups. So that means we can have two groups of Jagannath, two groups of Baladev, and two groups of Subhadra, right? Yes, Maharaj. So the Jagannath group, you have to study verses 3 and 4. And we want to hear how you will respond to a lifestyle magazine reporter, an alternative lifestyle magazine reporter. How, you, how will you describe to him Bhagavad Dharma based on texts 3 and 4 of this chapter? And then the Baladev group, you have to work with text number 5. And you have to tell about the duties of householder and sannyasis in preaching, when you're preaching, when you're addressing the congregation. How are you going to tell them about the, the, the duties and responsibilities of householders and sannyasis? In the Subhadra group, verse number 6, based on verse number 6, tell us about the Lord's arrangement for the maintenance of devotees but talking to gross materialists. So you're talking to gross materialists, people who have no faith in God, they don't believe in scriptures or anything, they're just gross materialists. So how are you going to convince them that somebody made arrangements for the devotees? Is it clear? Anyway, we'll give you 10 minutes to do this. We'll have two groups of Jagannath, two groups of Baladev, and two groups of Subhadra. So group one and two will be the Jagannath groups. Group three and four will be Baladev group. And group five and six will be the Subhadra groups. All right, Prabhu, can you divide the groups? We want six groups. Yes, Maharaj. I'll do it, Maharaj. And you have ten minutes. Maharaj, it is chapter 2.2, .2, right, Maharaj? Yes. Canto 2 and chapter 2. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, as we are creating the groups, Anuradha Prabhupada Mataji has raised her hand. Sorry, Mataji, I didn't uh, lower my hand before it was.
Krishna, uh, uh, my device got disconnected. Can you again connect me to the root number three? Sure, Matis. Thank you, Prabhu. I think time's up, Prabhu. I think we could close the groups now. Yes, Prabhu. All right. Yes, Maharaj, they're all coming back to the main room. Okay, good. Uh, should I go through? Just a small suggestion. I think we just started this because maybe we lost track of time or something. Is it possible yes, to extend yeah. by at least yes. a minute, minute and a half? Couple sure. of minutes, please, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just at least a minute and a half, two minutes would be good. Okay. You're in which group, bro, Sham? Uh, <laughs> I think so you want. I'm in that group. Jagannath group. Jagannath. Yeah, for, so I'm, sure everyone, I'm sure everyone reflects the same. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Even so, Badra group, we didn't discuss anything as yes, such because we were going through the verse. <laughs> okay. Maraj, can we allow him another uh, two, three minutes, Maraj? All right, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> now, oh, I'll, I'll actually. Um, okay, I create the groups, but how I'll identify you are in which group? It was automatic, Prabhu. I can. We can tell you group one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> group one, Prabhu. Tell me who are they in group one. Yeah. Yeah. They are, yeah. Here, here is there. Okay. I'll, I'll open it. I'll open the room again. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you.
Okay, Prabhu. I think I think that's enough time, Prabhu. Yeah, sure, Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Is everyone back? Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj, everyone is back. Okay, so we want the spokesman for the Jagannath group. The group one and group two. There should be two spokesmen. One for, because there are two groups, right? So, who is the spokesman for Jagannath Group? One of them. Maharaj, that is Anandini Gaurapriya Mataji. Okay, very good. So, we have the Alternative Lifestyle Magazine reporter here to question you. We want to know, what is this Bhagavad Dharma which is being propagated by your group? Hi Krishna Maharaj, Dhanvash So our group uh, had five members and we have uh, brought up, highlighted two major points uh, on this topic uh, from verse 3 and 4. The first point is about a comfortable life which is detrimental to progress. So humans should not be living a comfortable life. Uh, they should accept some austerities. And the second point was basically about uh, human, human life versus animal life. The human life is meant for self-realization as humans have a higher intelligence as compared to animals. So this higher intelligence should be utilized in art, science, philosophy and poetry um, and not just to accumulate more and more things. Okay. So you want people to accept some austerity, minimize the bodily demands. Uh, what about the other group, Jagannath group? Do you have any other points to add? Yes, yes Maharaj. From the group two, we have uh, Akinchan Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, so uh, we are, uh, just to uh, supplement the uh, idea with group one said, our idea is that we are providing an alternative lifestyle from the perspective that uh, the current lifestyle, everyone's running behind um, the rat race of what uh, the mainstream media is uh, posting, to, uh, is asking them to follow. But our idea is that we stop, we take a pause and we look at uh, uh, the purpose of human life uh, is not just to uh, run behind uh, uh, comfortable lifestyle. We're not saying that comfortable lifestyle is wrong, but being uh, uh, mad behind running a, a materialistic lifestyle or a comfortable lifestyle is uh, not the goal of life. So our alternative uh, uh, proposal is that uh, we utilize the energy which we have to connect to God for a higher purpose and not just live like uh, mere animals running behind eating, sleeping, mating or defending. Okay, very. that's very nice. I like this. 
point which you brought up, yes, that we're not against uh, comfortable living, but there's more to life than just comfortable living. And that's not the real goal, right? We have to be careful about how we present this point, these points to you know, newspaper reporters, magazines and so on. We don't want to, be, uh, to, to appear too fanatical and too extreme. But we, we do see a lot of benefit in a more simpler living and higher thinking. Right? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Okay, thank you Prabhu. And so, let's go on to the Balagadev group, who are discussing householders and sannyasis and presenting their situation, their duties to the congregation. Yeah, Maharaj, uh, Rohini Sumik, Sumukhi Mataji is a spokesperson for the group 3. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, we have this uh, householder and sannyasi duties uh, for the congregation. So, first I will tell about the uh, renounced order, uh, like for sannyasi's duties. The renounced order of life is never meant for begging or uh, living at the uh, cost of the other. Like uh, uh, the, uh, the six Goswamis, they followed, uh, uh, that is a big example for them. And the sannyasis should uh, not do uh, business when they are doing the devotional service. They should do only the devotional service. And uh, a sannyasi, he should live alone and he should be fearless. Uh, and uh, that Lord is always residing in everyone's heart. So he has to be uh, fearless. And uh, regarding the householder, I have few points. Uh, that householder should be fixed in one's own prescribed duties. Like he should give alms and donations. And, uh, he should do service to the Lord. Uh, uh, means in a family, he should keep uh, the Lord in the center and should do service. And uh, the householder should ideally follow the Shastras. Uh, what is given in the scriptures and he, uh, he should also do the uh, preaching. And uh, uh, one more point for the sannyasi is that uh, they should never go to the uh, householders to beg uh, like, uh, for arms and anything. Mm. Uh, that's all in so how are the sannyasis meant to maintain themselves? Uh, sorry, you. No, just a minute, I just want you to make it clear because you see sannyasis are not supposed to go begging. So how do they maintain themselves? They should just eat the fruits from uh, the. Tr they should just eat the fruit from the trees, right? That is uh, one more uh, Jamuna Mata ji. Can you? Yes, is the other group there? The other Balad, other ba Baladev group. In my group, uh, there was Jamuna Mata ji. So, uh, Jamuna Mata ji, can you please? Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, there is one more point. Uh, like uh, the sannyasis should uh, wear, survive on the clothes which are uh, like any any cloth which is left are out and uh, they don't need to beg out for a, a linen cloth. They should go and if they find any tattered cloth also they can wear that to cover themselves. <laughs> and if they are hungry they can go under a and uh, under a flower like a flowering tree where they can get the fruits for their survival. But yes, as a duty of the householder, the householder should give the arms to the pramanas and the sannyasis because uh, that is the prescribed duties as per the shastras. And uh, one more point about the grahasthas is that uh, it, it is mentioned in the Sanatana Dharma institution that the arms given to the mendicant is a part of the householder's duty and it is advised in the scriptures that the householder should treat the mendicant as 
uh, as a children, as a family children, and should not uh, provide them, sorry, and should provide them with the food, clothing, and etc. Yes, right. But they should not take the advantage of this charitable disposition of the faithful householders. The, the brahmanas should not take advantage of this. Right. Hare Krishna. Yes, uh, sannyasis, or man, Prabhupada explained that sannyasis uh, depend on mercy. The mercy, if Krishna gives them, they can accept. But they don't go begging. But if people, householders, if they want to give, then the sannyasi is duty bound to accept. That's his duty to accept. If somebody gives charity, he accepts. And sannyasi accepts, he can also give charity himself, even though he doesn't need. But he can accept the charity and later on he will give it to somebody else who is more in need. Just like ISKCON sannyasis, they may be given donations, they don't, maybe they don't need much themselves for their maintenance, but whatever donation they get, they will give for ISKCON projects, like we have a big temple coming up in Mayapur, or we will give to some needy person some other people who are more in need, and maybe some small temple project, they need some funds like that. So, so the sannyasis will give their donations to help develop these kind of projects. And householders, their, their duty, as you mentioned, you know, they, they want to uh, be charitable. And they can give the holy name. They can invite the sannyasis to their home to come for program. If they if they like, they can bring their family or they can bring their relative, their people, their neighbors, and they can arrange programs in their home and invite sannyasis to come. It's very nice. This is householders' duties. All right. The, then the the last group. The Subhadra group? Can we hear from the Subhadra group? Who are the spokesmen? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I am Rasikananda Gaurangadas. Hare Krishna. On behalf of our team. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. In this, we are uh, going to talk to the gross materialists who don't have knowledge or inclination towards the Lord or devotion. So we, we say that. The Lord is Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is as a Paramatma in everyone's heart, and He is all-pervading. So He is the maintainer of each and every one in this world. So the yogi, or the knowledgeable person, understands this and is surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These uh, normal people, without the knowledge, they have to understand that we are like a baby in the lap of the Lord, like a mother. So there is affection between baby and the mother always. But once the baby grows, they forget the affection between the mother and they will they will go away. Means their relation they forget the relationship with the Lord or with the mother. But the mother always remembers the child. The mother always is always looking for the child to come back. The same way the Lord is looking at us to come back. Like our constitutional position is we are uh, we are we are the servant of the Lord. So we have to remember this and uh, as Prabhupada said, we have to serve the Lord and thus we have to get an opportunity to go home back to Godhead. So in the society also, there are a lot of foolish people, even the leaders are foolish. The foolish leaders uh, in the godless society make so many plans and uh, devise so many systems to bring peace and prosperity. But actually this is illusion. Without the mercy of the Lord, without surrendering to the Lord, they cannot do anything. Therefore, they have to understand that Lord is very important. The Supreme Personality of God is Krishna. We have to understand this. And they and also the Lord is equal to all. This is what the people have to understand. Some people can understand that the Lord is partial to some, but that is not correct. Lord is equal to all. To understand this, we have to show our progress bhakti and surrender to the Lord, then we will understand. As uh, in the previous uh, session or in the previous uh, discussion, everyone were telling that 
the Lord is maintaining and helping each and not taking care of their issues. Same way, we can understand only when we surrender. Since the conditioned soul is in forgetful state, it feels that or thinks that we are the one, it means I am the body, I am not the soul like that. They think that they themselves are maintaining themselves, everything belongs to them. But actually, nothing belongs to us. Even our body doesn't belong to us. Even our soul, our Atma is also part of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we have to release that and surrender to the Lord. Okay. Another point is, this is how, another point is the Lord maintains each and every living entity in the universe, like from a small ant to the big elephant, everything. So we have to release these things. So understanding this, we will, we, by knowing this, we will understand that the Lord is within ourselves and Lord is all pervading. There is no need to search Lord anywhere outside, like going to the temples or you know, going here and there in search of the Lord. We have to find out the Lord within ourselves. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. May I request other? Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Is there okay. other Subhadra group? Anything to add? Yes, yes Guru Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Dandar Pranam. So, Prabhu covered all the points almost. So, as a devotee, we all understand that Lord maintains everyone. He is the maintainer of everyone, not only the devotees, even the gross materialists. Since the gross materialists are fully engaged in their sense gratification, it is very difficult to explain them. But as it is by the mercy of the devotees, we can uh, explain them uh, how, what is our position as a jiva, what is our, our position is, the constitutional position is to render service unto the Lord. Uh, so thus, that we have to explain them. And without, uh, we can give examples like how Lord is exp uh, uh, maintaining the devotees, our contemporary time period, we, uh, the, um, Shastras in the previous, uh, from uh, Bhagavata Mandal, we can give so many examples. Uh, we can say the example of Pandavas, they are the great devotees of the Lord. When they were in exile, how Lord uh, helped them, them uh, when they received those uh, sages that time also, even by providing Akshay Patra. Like that, we can give so many examples from uh, Shastras. Our contemporary time, Srila, our uh, uh, Jagat Guru, Srila Prabhupada, he, he was uh, without, just with 40 rupees, he traveled to America. But the Lord, because he is a, he was a fully surrounded soul, he was a great devotee. So he gave him everything, all those made uh, Lakshmi or money, he utilized only for the service of the Lord. Nothing he used it for his personal sense of gratification. So the Lord will provide to everyone, not only to the devotees, even for the materialists, according to their karma. What we should understand is, we have to, as a devotee, we should utilize everything in the service of the Lord. If we are using it, so again, Lord will take it back. And we can give the example of Arjuna Acharya, Yoga Kshemam Vahamyaham. So Lord will personally come and provide that also, that is also an example given. Like that, Lord will take care of the devotees or the man, everyone, personally the devotees. He will take special care. Uh, uh, ultimately. So, no need to endeavor extra, like, that is the uh, principle. We are when we should not waste our time in uh, working uh, strenuously for our uh, material satisfaction. Yes, very good. We have to focus on our spiritual life, provided that uh, whatever is there, we have to be satisfied with that. Uh, okay. Thank you very that. much. Very nice, very powerful presentation. Yes, very good. All right, so we'll go ahead here. A little more application here. Here you can see these two illustrations. How would we preach the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context? You know, of course, these two gentlemen on the left here, in the picture on the left, they're not our devotees, but they're sadhus. Right? So, if we want to present the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context, what kind of points do, you, do we want to bring up to the public? What do you think would be relevant to them? You know, we certainly we couldn't really expect in the modern context to expect people to follow the example of the two, these two gentlemen on the left. 
that's not really the modern context, is it? So is Bhagavad Dharma, how, does, how do we apply, how do we preach Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context? Bhagavan Balaji Prabhu. Basically, we have to tell them from the picture we can see, they left everything. They are living in isolation or they are living in the street. So for modern, um, current day, we don't need to give everything, go out and you know start our uh, spiritual life. We can be in our householder's life itself, follow the scriptures um, and uh, follow our uh, four regulative principles and all. A simple living will help them to advance in spiritual There's no need to go out and uh, forest or live like this to uh, advance in spiritual life. Okay. Yes, good points. We don't need to uh, go out of the world. We can remain in the world. We can remain in whatever situation we're in. Mm -hmm. And we can still make spiritual progress. Any other points? Which might uh, be... Maharaj, uh, Amrita Padma Mataji raised her hand first. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. We have to include uh, our uh, Shastra, I mean uh, scriptures, that is Bhagavat, uh, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita in the schools or colleges uh, with the parallel with their studies. Like uh, with the along with the syllabus, they have to make it mandatory so that uh, uh, like you are pili, that uh, youth also will uh, develop the they know the life uh, uh, goal with respect to Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. They will take it as a manual. All right. Yeah, they need to present this knowledge to the to the youth. The young people yeah. it should be given some importance in education. Of course, that's a, ve a very challenging thing. You know, many of the colleges now, the university, they, they don't like us to come on their campus because they, they get worried that we're going to take away their students. So we have to somehow adjust that um, fear which they have of our devotees. And, you know, we, somehow we have to uh, gain their confidence and trust that we're not coming to take away their people. We want them to, we want the students to stay there and study and graduate. But at the same time, we want to improve their character and reform their character. We don't want their character to be degraded, which often happens when they go to the colleges and universities today. All right, maybe one more comment, anyone? Yeah, Nitai Jeevan Prabhu. Hare Krishna uh, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, Maharaj, uh, as like uh, if somebody is too rich... Prabhu, your audio is uh, very feeble, just come close to the mic. Hare Krishna, is that okay Prabhuji? Hare Krishna? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, uh, if someone is, is rich or they are earning good, we are not asking them to, to leave anything. Uh, we are just uh, asking them to uh, utilize that for the service. They can do some charity uh, to, the, to, to the temples or to, uh, to uh, I mean, they can uh, share what they have or utilize it for the service of Krishna. Uh, another thing is, uh, like, uh, it's mentioned here that uh, um, sorry, uh, it missed. Okay, that this. Uh, okay, that's it. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Well, in reg regard to that point, you have to be a bit cautious about that. You know, Srila Prabhupada never made a habit of asking people for money. He would just depend on if it came, he would use it. But he never made a point of going around asking people for money. If rich people came and they wanted to give, all right. But there's there's no question that you have to give your money. <laughs> you know that's we have to be a bit careful about that. You know, we don't 
we don't want to put pressure on people that you have to give, you have to support our Krishna consciousness movement. It's voluntary. The people do have money and if people are rich, then they're, they're wise to give something to Krishna. It's good for them, it's for their benefit. But we don't demand it, we don't uh, put pressure on people that you have to give. Okay? So uh, we, we don't also expect everybody to shave their heads and have a shika and to wear dhoris and so on. Mm, it's nice if they do, but <laughs> they don't have to. In Krishna consciousness, it's uh, not, not just a matter of dress, but it's a, it's a matter of consciousness and character. We want people to improve their character and to protect themselves from bad habits and irreligious tendencies. So education is important, very important. We want to give people the best knowledge, not only of matter, but of spirit also. Okay, we'll go ahead. Here's a quote from Srila Prabhupada. Would someone like to read this for me? Hare Krishna. Yes, go ahead. Our principle should our principle should be not to think about our personal maintenance. Ajita, the Supreme Lord, Krishna, he is maintaining everyone. Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. And he will not maintain a person who has fully un surrendered to the surrendered to him. No. How it can be? Suppose a gentleman is maintaining so many other children and he does not maintain his own children, surely he does. Keep, keep reading. Therefore, our principle should be, we should not think about our personal maintenance. We should dedicate our life for Krishna and Krishna will take care. That should be the principle. Don't be harassed, thinking always how I shall be maintained. That is not the problem. Maintenance is no problem. Real problem is how we shall be fully surrendered to Krishna. That is wanted. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.5 New York, Sun, 1975. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Thank you, Maharaji. So very clear from Prabhupada there. We have to dedicate, we have to just depend on Krishna. Don't be always worried about our maintenance. Depend on Krishna for that. All right, someone can read this next one. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'll read. Serving the Lord in the heart, thus being fixed, one must render service unto the super soul situated in one's own heart by his omnipotency. Because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited, he is the ultimate goal of life and by worshipping him, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. Yes, Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.6. Right. So Sukadeva Goswami is continuing, he's speaking about minimizing the demands of the body and now he's turning towards meditating on the super soul. Previously he was speaking about contemplating the Virata Rup. But now he's taking it a little higher, a step higher, to contemplating the super soul. And he points out, you don't need to go anywhere. The Lord is there within our heart. We just have to contemplate the Lord there. All right. Someone read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandas Pranam. Neglecting one's own self-interest. Srimad Bhagavadam 2.2.7 Who else but the gross materialists will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only? C. 
seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as the consequence of accruing the result of their own work so what is what are these non permanent names what do you think these names are in the non permanent names Right, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, we have so many designations, and this all be there temporarily as long as the body is there, and it is the body is like a bubble in the uh, waves. So the real identity is we are eternal part and parcel of the Almighty God, Krishna. Okay. So non-permanent names are these different designations which we have. Mm. We may be CO, we may be MD, <laughs> we may be <laughs> servant of the servant, right? So different designations you mentioned, yeah, that's good. There are many non-permanent names. The whole material world based around non-permanent names. Even the names of our countries are not permanent. A thousand years ago, these names were not there. Will they be, where will they be in a thousand years also? So these names are very temporary things. All right. So, Prabhupada explains the duty of the renounced person because Sukadeva Goswami was speaking about preparing for the end of life. So he was explaining the duty of a renounced person. The renounced order of life is never meant for begging or living at the cost of others as a parasite. The first duty of a person in the renounced order of life is to contribute some literary work for the benefit of the human being in order to give him realized direction towards self-realization. 225 purport. So Srila Prabhupada, before he went to the West, he had completed the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and he took that with him when he went to the West. He took his books with him. We're encouraged, all devotees are encouraged to write. It may be published, it may not, but it's a very good exercise for our own mind to write our realizations. And part of the course here in our Bhakti Vaibhav and Bhakti Shastri, we encourage the devotees to, to write, to write about some points from the philosophy, discussing the meaning of different points which are brought up. It's a powerful exercise for us to think about the, the teachings and how to present it. All right. Then Sukadeva Goswami after speaking about the, the need for renunciation and minimizing bodily demands, he talks about this meditation on the super-soul, and he describes the super-soul, verses 8 up to 13. Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell, and a club, respectively. So the different symbols of Vishnu are held there in the four hands of the super soul, Paramatma. The Virata Rupa is the expansion from the Paramatma. So some people meditate on the Virata Rupa and others meditate on the super soul. Okay, so here's, uh, would someone like to read this one now? Prabhupada's purports, 12 to 14. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I read? Can please, I read? Please do. Summary of Srila Prabhupada's purports, 12 to 14. The process of meditation recommended in the Srimad Bhagavatam is not to fix one's attention on something impersonal or void. The meditation should concentrate on the Supreme Person, 
either in his Virat Roop or in his Satchit Ananda Vigraha. Those who are too engrossed in sense gratification cannot be allowed to participate in Archana or to touch the transcendental form of the Radha Krishna. For them, it is better to meditate upon the gigantic Virat Rupa of the Lord. Similarly, they should restrict their study of Srimad Bhagavatam to the first two cantos. Some way or other, one must try to re-establish one's forgotten relation with the Lord in order to gain real happiness in life. Without such meditation on God, either person of the human being become covered with misconceptions regarding his constitutional position. Thank you, Maharaji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada is describing here the process of meditating on the Lord. And then at the same time, he goes on to describe certain people who are encouraged not to worship, not to meditate on the Lord. They've not purified themselves sufficiently. They're so much engrossed in sense gratification. So they're encouraged better to contemplate the Virata root. And then in, even in reading Srimad Bhagavatam, they should concern themselves with the first two cantos. First two cantos being the lotus feet of the Lord. And this way they can purify their existence and gradually become qualified for higher things. And so you see some restrictions there about who can actually do this kind of meditation. So Tsukadev Goswami described about the Lord in the heart, the Super Soul, describes the, the features of the Lord and the beauty, the attractive nature of the Lord. And then he goes on to describe about two kinds of yogis. One yogi is interested in instant liberation. That comes in texts 15 to 21. We hear about the yogi who goes directly back to Godhead. In verse, uh, he, he's uh, doing this meditation on the super soul and he's completely pure with no material desire. So he has no interest in going to the higher planets and he goes directly back to Godhead. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that this is a process followed by the Bhakti Mishra Yogi. In other words, he's a yogi whose yoga practice is mixed with devotion. And he has no interest in seeing higher planets up to Brahma Loka. Some others some other people are like tourists, you know. <laughs> you know, like tourists come, they want to go around and see everything. And so if we have that tendency, we won't be able to go back to Godhead. But this yogi, he has no material desire and he's just fixed. He can and go straight out the material world. You can see uh, in the illustration something of the process by which he goes out of the material world, that he will block the different uh, gates in the body. For example, his foot will go up, go on the back of his backside, because there are different gates in the body, gates which have to be closed, and we have to force the soul to go up and out of the top of the head, you can see the representation in the picture, the soul coming out the top of the head and going to the spiritual world. So this is how the yogi gets immediate or instant liberation. He brings the life air up through the different chakras, six chakras in the body, and he brings it up to the top of the head and keeps all the gates in the body closed and the soul will go out the top of the head. But he has to be completely pure, no material desire. 
Now the other yogi who is described, he is going to get gradual elevation until he gets liberation. Right? The, the instant yogi that was described in texts 15 to 21 and then 22 to 32 describes a gradual process of elevation. Described here. Having spoken of instant liberation, Sukadev Goswami now describes gradual liberation, krama mukti. If one desires to attain Brahma Loka, or other higher realms in this universe. At the time of giving up the body, one does not give up the mind and senses. Rather, with the mind and senses, one goes to enjoy those planets. So you can see the difference. Now, the yogi, the, inst the one who gets instant liberation, he gives up the subtle body as well. The, everything enters a, he gives up the gross body and the subtle body merges into the self, and self merges into the super self, and in this way he's able to go immediately back to Godhead. But this yogi who is getting gradual elevation, because he still has some desires for material enjoyment, so what happens, he takes his mind and senses with him. And although he's going up in the universe, and as you go up in the universe, it becomes more and more subtle. So the mind and senses also become more and more subtle as he proceeds to the higher planets in the universe. And it's described at one point, he will go up to the, uh, the Vaishnavara planet where it's all fire. And the, the fire will purify everything all of the gross elements of his body will be purified by that fire of the, the fire on that planet. And in this way he can proceed in his subtle form to go up to the higher planets. All right? And so, because he's going to enjoy these planets, so he has to take his mind and senses with them, but they, they're in a very subtle form. Right, someone can read this section for me, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Desire to be dominated by the Supreme Predominator. All the Siddhis mentioned above are features of domination over the world. The devotees of the Lord are not ambitious to dominate a false and temporary phenomenon. On the contrary, a devotee wants to be dominated by the supreme predominator, the Lord. A desire to serve the Lord, the supreme predominator, is spiritual or transcendental. And one has to attain this purification of the mind and the senses to get admission into the spiritual kingdom. Hare Krishna. This is uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam. 2.2.22. Thank you, Mataji. Yes. So, you can see the mood of the devotee, the mood of the, rather, the yogi. The, oh, Prabhupada talks about devotees. He said, devotees not ambitious to dominate the false and temporary phenomena. Devotee wants to be dominated by the Supreme Predominator. And so some, not all yogis have that nature, but devotee will have that nature. The devotee has to, will have the mood of service, to be the servant, and he wants to be dominated by Krishna. And so this is the requirement, to go back to Godhead. We have to have that surrendered mood recognizing Krishna as the master and we're simply his tiny insignificant servant. Uh, going all the way up to Satya Loka, where the, the, grad, the yogi who's going by gradual liberation, he will proceed gradually up to Satya Loka and we learn that Satya Loka, there are three different types of perfection described. 
First of all, there's the karmi who attains a specific planet by dint of pious activities, attains places in terms of his comparative pious activities. So he's a karmi, but he's done some punya, he's done a lot of pious activities, and according to his pious activities, he will be elevated to different places in the universe. People who are more pious, they'll go higher up in the universe. In the top of the universe, they're the most pious people. But they're there in the material world. And then you have the jnani. The jnani, he's attained the place by dint of virat or Hiranyagarbha worship. And he's liberated along with the liberation of Lord Brahma. So the liberation of Lord Brahma comes at the end of the lifetime of Brahma, where there's an annihilation. So at that time, the jnani, who has also come there to Satyaloka, he's, he also can go along with Lord Brahma, and they may enter into the spiritual world. Not always, it's not always true that Lord Brahma goes to the spiritual world, but if he's a pure devotee, he does. And the jnani, well, he may go, to, he can go to the spiritual world, but he's not going to enter into the Vaikuntha planets. He's not going to get into the, into the planets there, because jnani, he's, be, he's a, somewhat of an impersonalist. So the impersonalist or the Brahma Jnani, he can enter into the Brahma Jyoti, but he cannot enter into the spiritual planets. So the Jnani gets all the way up there, but he's not going to get the same perfection as the devotee. Now here the devotee is described. One who attains the place by dint of devotional service, he can penetrate into the different coverings of the universe and thus ultimately disclose his spiritual identity in the absolute atmosphere of supreme existence. So you can see the devotee, he goes through the coverings of the universe. There are different coverings over the universe, the different elemental coverings are there, and the coverings are, te each one gets ten times thicker than the next one. So, in order to go out of the material existence, you have to go through these coverings to enter into the spiritual world. And the devotee can do that. The devotee penetrates these coverings and enters into the spiritual world, he will develop his spiritual identity, his spiritual form will manifest. So three different stages of perfection, the karmi, the jnani, and the devotee. Yes, someone can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The residents of Brahmaloka can attain perfection in three different ways. Virtuous persons who reach Brahmaloka by dint of their pious work become masters of various planets after the resur resurrection of Brahma. Those who have worshipped Garbhuda Vishayi Vishnu are liberated with Brahma and those who are pure devotees of the personality of Godhead at once push through the coverings of the universe and enter the spiritual sky. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela 5.22 Thank you, Madhaji. All right. So, uh, hearing and reading are mandatory. When we speak of hearing and chanting, it means that not only should one chant and hear the holy name of the Lord as Rama, Krishna, or systematically the 16 names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But one should also read and hear the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. 
Srimad Bhagavatam 2 to 30 purport. Srila Prabhupada indicating to us how important it is for us to not only chant Hare Krishna, but also regularly study the scriptures and study them in the association of devotees. It's good for us. Come together and discuss. People ask, if I just chant, is it okay? Some people just like to chant, some people just like to read. But both are important. We have to read and we have to chant. They're both mandatory, both required for the proper growth of our devotion. Unwanted creepers. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is, of course, in connection with the cleaning of the Gundicha temple. So, in the course of our chanting, different creepers will grow up. Some unnecessary creepers growing with the bhakti kripa are the creepers of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection. Diplomatic behavior, animal killing, mundane profiteering, mundane adoration and mundane importance. All these are unwanted creepers. How careful we have to be to cultivate the bhakti lata beach, the creeper of devotion. Because there's so many other creepers and these creepers can look very similar to the creeper of devotion. So we have to be very expert to be able to recognize what is actually the unwanted creeper and what we really want. The final section of the chapter describes that it's bhakti yoga which is really the important thing and it's simply by bhakti that we are able to enter into the spiritual world. Karma and jnana are not going to take us to the spiritual world, not going to take us into the spiritual world, not going to take us to Krishna anyway. And here's a quote which is given in this section of the Bhagavatam from Varaha Purana. It said, By my personal desire, I bring my unalloyed devotees to my supreme abode, placing them on the shoulders of Garuda. They return without having to undergo the path of light. And so, the illustration, of course, is very appropriate. You can see the devotee in the ocean of material existence, and the Lord is coming to deliver that person, to take him out of this ocean of material existence and take him to his own abode. And it's only possible by ananya bhakti, pure unmixed devotion, that need for pure devotion, very important. And Prabhupada describes this in the, in the purports here at the end of the chapter. Prabhupada says here, the direct path of bhakti. There are many indirect methods for deliverance from the clutches of material existence, but none of them is as easy and uh, as auspicious as bhakti yoga. The means of jnana and yoga and other allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer. Such activities help one to reach the stage of bhakti yoga after many, many years. As already explained in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, either direct bhakti yoga or the means which ultimately culminate in bhakti yoga without any tinge of fruitive activity constitutes the highest form of religion. Everything else is simply a waste of time for the performer. Srila Sridhar Swami and all other acharyas like Jiva Goswami agree that bhakti yoga is not only easy, simple, 
natural and free from trouble, but is the only source of happiness for the human being. From Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, 2nd Chapter, Text 33, Purport. So after hearing Sukadeva Goswami describe these two different processes by which the yogi quits the body and achieves liberation, this is very important for us to appreciate the conclusion which is given by our acharyas, like Sridhar Swami and Jiva Goswami. They say bhakti yoga is not only easy, simple, natural, free from trouble, it's the only source of happiness for the human being. These other processes, yoga processes, could you imagine how difficult must be, <coughs> how difficult must be to sit and to control the mind and restrain the senses and to elevate the life air in the body. How advanced people had to be in order to do anything like that, and how much trouble it was required. They have to go away from the world, they have to be in seclusion, away from everyone. We read in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, Kardama Muni was doing Astanga Yoga, and Astanga Yoga means meditation. And he was meditating for 10,000 years. And then after 10,000 years, the Lord appeared to him. And the Lord told him, don't worry, I'm, I'm arranging everything for you. A suitable lady will come, you can accept her as your wife. And so in this way, Kadama Muni was given Devahuti as his wife. So that was his 10,000 years of Astanga Yoga, that's where it got him. But Bhakti Yoga is so simple and so, so happy, so joyful that it doesn't take any amount of time at all. Very quickly we can get out from this material world. Okay, so uh, some, what we've covered in this, what we want to explain anyway, the connection between the first and second chapter. Did everyone get that? What happened? Someone can explain what was the connection between the first and second chapter? There were two questions uh, which were asked by Parikshit Maharaj to Shukadev Goswami. Uh, uh, what is uh, good for uh, the general populace and uh, what is the best thing for me uh, who you know who am at the uh, who's at the verge of dying so the answers to that then uh, come in the second chapter well didn't didn't they also come in the first chapter was it only in the second chapter he answered that what about the first chapter what happened in the first chapter? Yes? Someone else? Can I yes. say Guru Maharaj? Yes, please. please. Yeah. Krishna. Yes, yes Mataji, go ahead. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, here, Shukdeva Goswami, he, uh, he says the authority to verify the potency of meditating in the universal form. And uh, Shukadeva Goswami also says uh, the prior to manifestation uh, of the cosmos, Lord Brahma was meditating on Virotropa. Yes, right. He gave the example of Lord Brahma. Because in chapter 1 he described about the, the power of meditating on the Virata Rupa. And then chapter 2 began, he gave the example of Lord Brahma immediately in the second chapter. That Lord Brahma regained his uh, creative power by meditating on the Virata Rupa. So, so that was the connection. Another connection is also 
the, the first chapter was describing meditation on the Virata Rup, which is more meditation on the Brahman. And the second chapter is bringing us a step higher to meditating on the Super Soul. Mm -hmm. Super Soul? Yes. Yes. So, different realizations of the Absolute from Brahman come to Paramatma. And then the third chapter we'll hear about Bhagavan realization. So the overview of the second chapter, hmm? we heard Sukadeva Goswami describe about the world of names and we should minimize the demands and keep life simple, very simple, don't accumulate things unnecessarily, try to keep everything. And he, he said even we can depend on nature. We don't need anything, everything is already provided by nature. Someone gave a nice example today. We were hearing that the insects they get a, they need a few grains of sugar. They're provided, and the elephants they need many kilos of food every day, and they're also provided for. It's all provided by the grace of the Lord. So Sukadeva Goswami was speaking in the beginning like that. They depend on nature's gifts, and then he went on to speak about contemplating the super soul. He described the super soul, and then he spoke about the yogi who gets instant liberation, and then he described the yogi who gets the uh, not so uh, you, you know uh, not not so a quick liberation. He's going first to the higher planets, and then he's getting a more gradual liberation. And then at the end, we hear the glorification of bhakti over all these other processes. So that's the second chapter. The process of achieving the Supreme through mystic yoga, that's the direct process, that's the instant yogi. No material desires, completely free of all material desires. And he, he, he sits in meditation, contemplating the Super Soul, and he blocks the different gates in the body, puts his foot in, up in, at the back, in the back side. Generally it's described that a dying person, the soul will go out of the mouth. Some unfortunate people, sometimes the soul will go out the back side. So the yogi doesn't want the soul to go out the back side. So he puts his foot in the back side and he closes his mouth and closes his eyes and he meditate and raises the life air up to the top of the head to go out of the top of the head, to go straight back to the spiritual world. Through the coverings of the universe, straight back. So that's the instant process. And then the gradual ascent through the higher planets and three types of perfection. So the three types of perfection you'll remember, the karmi, the jnani, and the devotee. And the gradual ascent, going through the different planets, a devotee still has some desire, so he keeps the subtle body, the mind and senses. He keeps, a, of course, a subtle body, and he goes first to the fire, this fiery planet, burns up everything gross, and then he goes on to the higher planets, he goes up to the Milky Way, and up, to, gradually up and up to, and then at one point he sees the lower planets are all being burned and destroyed, so he goes all the way up to Brahma Loka, and he's up to Satya Loka, and he will stay on Brahma Loka with Lord Brahma, and wait for the end of Lord Brahma's life, and when Lord Brahma is liberated, he will go with him. So that's a gradual ascent. Then we spoke about the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a contemporary context. Bhagavad Dharma in a contemporary context. You made some nice points. I like that point about we don't need to change our position. Lord Chaitanya did speak about that. That was one of the important principles which Lord Chaitanya discussed when he talked with Ramananda Rai. And Ramananda Rai quoted the verse about the highest principle of religion. 
And it was stated there, Stane stita shruti gatam tan van manobir ye prayaso jita jitopi asitais trilokyam that just stay in whatever position you're in. If you're a grihasta, you just stay as a grihasta. And if you're a brahmachari, you stay brahmachari. Just hear about Krishna in the association of devotees. And so this is the principle of Bhagavad Dharma, to hear about Krishna. It doesn't depend on your, uh, your physical position and so on. The important thing is to hear. You want to hear in the association of devotees. Okay. Uh, we cannot discover the mysteries of the Supreme Lord by our mundane endeavours. They are only revealed by His grace to the proper devotees. These mysteries are gradually disclosed to the various devotees in proportion to the gradual development of their service attitude. So this is the whole point that, that what, in contemplating the Virata Rup or meditating on the Super Soul, there has to be that service attitude that is essential in order to proceed to higher levels of spiritual progress. That mood of giving service to the Lord, that is what is most important. That's what the Lord wants and that's how he becomes conquered, by the loving service of his devotees. Okay, there's one more quote here. His existence, Paramatma, can be realized by one who has the single qualification of submissiveness and who thereby becomes a surrendered soul. The development of submissiveness is the cause of proportionate spiritual realization by which one can ultimately meet the Supreme Lord in person as a man meets another man face to face. So, submissiveness, surrender, submission, like that. Okay, are there any questions? Maharaj, there is one question in the chat box. Yes. Uh, what is the ultimate destination for a Bhakti Mishra Yogi? This is asked by our uh, Chiranjeevi Shamprabhu. What is the ultimate destination for the Bhakti Mishra Yogi? Well, he can go back to Godhead. It's possible he can go back to the spiritual world by his yoga. We, we were describing Bhakti Mishra Yogi that they can, they can go back if they, have, if they have no material desire. That is the point. They have to be without material desire. If they still have desires, we describe the two yogis. One goes directly, instantly, and the other one, gradually. So they're both yogis, they're both yogis and they both have some bhakti. But one has more material desires than the other. One is without material desire, the other one, the one who's going gradually, he still has some material desire. He wants to see, he wants to look at the higher planets, he's going to look and, you know, he's not ready to go straight back to Godhead. So it will depend on their purification, how much this, uh, they're still desiring to enjoy. The, one, the yogi who goes gradually, he will keep his mind and senses when he goes up to the higher planets. But before he can go out of the material world, he has to give up the subtle body. But the point is that this 
yoga, bhakti, mishra, yoga, it, it's very difficult. It's very, very rare that anybody in this age will be able to achieve any kind of success by this process. It's really meant like Satya Yuga, when people were all of the highest character and had very long duration of life, then they could do that kind of process. They were familiar with the different chakras in the body and raising up the life air up to, out of the, to, to go out. They, they knew how to do that. Today, who knows how to do that? Nobody knows how to do that. Practically no one knows how to lift up the life airs to the top of the head. We're just trying to teach people the easiest thing, to chant Hare Krishna, eat Krishna Prasadam, and be happy. And gradually we introduce them to the philosophy. Let them understand also this knowledge. What is real yoga? Not just some Bhakti Misra yoga, but real yoga. Analyte bhakti, ananya bhakti. That's the real way to go back to Godhead. But yogis, they may go, they may, the yogis, different yogis have different conditions. Some yogis want, have material desires. They want yoga cities. They'll stay in the material world. Some yogis, they, they have actually the desire for liberation. They're impersonalists and they just want, they're not able to distinguish between the soul and the super soul. And they may simply get Sayuja Mukti. They enter into the Brahma Jyoti, but Sayuja Mukti. And other yogis, they may be great devotees. They're pure devotees. They're meditating on the Lord in the heart and they have that mood of submissiveness. They have that mood of surrender. So they go back to Godhead. They will get their spiritual body and with their spiritual body they will take up service to the Lord. So different kinds, just like there are different kinds of perfection, there's a karmi, there's a jnani, there's a yogi, there's, there's different kinds of devotees. Some are pure devotees, some are mixed devotees. The mixed devotees, they will stay still in the material world because they still have some desires. They have to be pure to enter into the spiritual kingdom. All right, is it clear? So we're hearing about Paramatma realization. Then chapter 3 will describe the third stage of self-realization, how to become Bhagwan realized, to realize Bhagwan. Right? The absolute truth is understood. Brahmati Paramatmati Bhagavan Iti Sabyate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance as Brahman. Paramatma Bhagavan. So different realizations of the Absolute Truth. Some realize the Lord as Brahman, they contemplate the Virata Rup. Some realize the Lord as Paramatma, they're meditating on the Super Soul, and others have the Bhagavan realization. Now they can all be pure devotees, they can all go back to Godhead. But there's different levels of pure devotees. All right, any other question? No. Maharaj, I have a question on that. So like you said that uh, they are all pure devotees at different levels, right? So those who attend, uh, attain the Brahma Jyoti or Paramatma, do they come back again to actually um, get the lotus feet of Krishna? Well, they, they progress there. 
they they may be they, that may be their actual position. They actually may be perfectly satisfied at that level. They okay. may not actually desire that higher position. Just okay. like not everybody, not everybody is in uh, Madhurya Ras. You know, if yes. somebody may be in Shantaras, that may be their their nature, their position. And they're not going to go on to, not that everybody's in Madhurya. In the same way, some people are, they're satisfied with Brahman realization. They're happy. It's enough for them. They don't go any further. So, so what about Maharaj, like um, the demons? They also get liberated, right? Mm -hmm. So what about them? Well, they also stay in that... These demons who are killed by Krishna, they get impersonal liberation. Yes. Right? They get, yes. they get to this yes. Shayuja Mukti. So, yes, yes. Uh huh. So they'll, they'll be. So they stay there? They, those, they may stay there for some, uh, but they may come back again. Because, okay. because that, that position of Sayuja Mukti is not very satisfying. There's no, because there's no activity. There's nothing. So usually the souls who get that Sayuja Mukti, they will stay there, but then they come back again to the material existence. So isn't isn't a Brahman realization and Paramatma also, especially the Brahman realization, isn't that Sayuja Mukti as well? Well, it it doesn't have to be. Uh, the, you see, one may be Brahman realized, it may simply be a, a Brahm, it may be a Brahma Jnani. He's not actually, a, he's not an, he's just simply a Brahmagyan. He's just satisfied with the Brahman. Mm. Uh, it, the, okay. So some pe for some people, they're just happy to be there. Just like uh, someone may be following Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva's, yes. Lord Shiva's abode is between the material world and the spiritual world. So some people... May and they may go to like Lord Shiva's abode and actually be there with him. That is something of the a composition for even Buddhists. Even they may even go there to that place where Lord Shiva is, because the Buddhists they don't go to the spiritual world, but they could go to this place between the material and spiritual world. So those who contemplate the Brahman. They may also go to that place where Lord Shiva is there and be there with him. Okay. Thank you, Marvind. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, can we take one more question, Maharaj? Yes. Yeah. Jamana Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Maharaj, I just want to know what is uh, Hiranya Garbha worship? If you could just highlight more about it. Yeah, Haranya Garbha worship was described to be the worship of Garbhodakshayi Vishnu. Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, because that's where Lord Brahma comes from, right? Lord Brahma comes from the lotus flower, which comes from the navel of Garbhodakshayi Vishnu. So, Haranya Garbha worship is the worship of Garbhodakshayi Vishnu. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful session. Uh, Maharaj, uh, uh, would you kindly give the open book assessment question, Maharaj? Oh. I will share. There are three questions, Maharaj. Oh. So you have any choice or you can, you can tell the what is Maharaj. I'm sharing here. Oh. There are, there are three questions and they have to answer uh, two. You have any specific or uh, you will give a choice to them, Maharaj? Uh -uh. Uh, well, we better not give them the choice. We better make it... They have to do two out of three, yeah? Yes, Maharaj.
well, well, one and three. Question, okay, my question one, question yeah. three. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hmm? Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki.